screen just a moment. All right, welcome everybody. I'll be waiting a couple of minutes because last session went a bit over time. So yeah, we'll see. I'll wait a little bit for people to get in. Uh, in the meantime, there, there is a quick survey question uh, in the poll section. And you can also follow along with this uh, presentation. Uh, yeah, there is in the file section, there is the link to this. So, yeah, let's. Let's advertise this a bit around. All right, looks so, like uh, there's at least two people in the queue to join us. So let's, let's wait and see. In the meantime, again, a reminder, there is a poll question um, that you can fill out, which I would highly appreciate. All right, now we are speaking. So everybody's coming in, welcome, welcome. Uh, so reminder, there is a poll question in the poll section and you can also uh, follow up the presentation if you want to. The slides are available. There's a link in the file section. All right, so one more time check. I think there is enough of us right now and we are seven minutes after the start. So without further ado, let's get started. 
So, hello everybody. My name is Jan Goshak. I have been with the Meteor Community Packages since the very beginning with Meteor since 2015, actually. December 2014, I think, was the first time I've kind of installed Meteor, maybe a little bit before it as well. And I started this community survey back in 2019, uh, pretty much around the same time that Community Packages was started. Uh, one of my projects that I do and test a lot of major stuff is called the Universe, which I had a short presentation about uh, yesterday. Um, let's see, and I'm a freelance contractor currently working with Meteor Software, and you can find me as a storyteller or storyteller CZ on social media. So uh, we'll be talking as presentation a little bit about the history of uh, this survey very shortly. And of course, then we'll be looking, you know, why I came here on the results. And I'll give, you know, some review at the end, uh, some issues that kind of came up or not. And, uh, you know, my comments, commentary to the results as well. And then I'll be talking about uh, next steps that will be following this as always to release all the data and stuff like that. So I see that third of you have not taken the community survey. Shame on you. I hope you will at least uh, be part of the state of JS survey that's coming up. There's also right now ongoing state of CSS uh, survey. So uh, quickly, you know, find out the internet and submit. It's very nice to have uh, those information. So uh, the history, as I mentioned uh, before, the survey started uh, in 2019, initially to kind of gauge the interest in meteor community packages and which packages to focus on. And we had 57 responses. It was a very quick survey of people who were active on the forums, not much. We had 207 responses in 2020, with again more focus on meteor community packages. And this year we had 298 responses. And we I shifted the focus a little bit more towards uh, Meteor itself and the Meteor Cloud. And I think those are going to be super informative. So uh, let's get started then. So first of all, uh, I'm not going to go as, as it was the survey question by question. I'm going to go by themes. And first, I would like to take a look on the people who have answered the survey. Here is a quick map uh, of you know, where the people are from who answered it. Uh, bright yellow is, I'm oh, sorry, bright red is uh, just usually one person. And then as it gets lighter, that means more people. And then green, as we see in with America, we have 54 responses from as the most populous. I would say we had a bit of a decline uh, in responses from Russia. Uh, France and Germany were, as always, very strong. Uh, Australia not lacking behind either. And also Brazil this year uh, has kind of got more on the map as well. So. I know uh, in many places still that there is you know, more developers than uh, answer the survey. So kind of the challenge for next year is to again, get out to more developers and get their responses. Uh, as for if they were using Meteor at work, as you can see, almost three quarter answered that yes. So that's uh, definitely an improvement. And also a couple more or well, in this case, it's like tens of people using it at least for some projects. So size of the company, uh, as you can see, most of it is just up to five people, small ones. And then it kind of grows five to 10 people, 10 to 50. And then as is usual, it kind of goes down. I apologize that the answers are not uh, you know, based by the size, they didn't have the time to rearrange it. So uh, those are kind of the results. Uh, 
quite interesting that we have a uh, meter being used in quite a few companies or or these people who use meter that have over uh, 1,000 uh, attendees, or sorry, 1,000 employees. So that was quite surprising to me as well. And in the middle, like 500 to 1,000 people, not so much. So now the uh, never ending debates about technology updates and all that stuff. So let's take a look what people are thinking. So first of all, uh, GraphQL, this question has been with us uh, since the very beginning of the survey. So, and this again, I would say the number of people who are not using GraphQL is slightly increased as compared to the opposite. Uh, Redis Uplock usage has stayed pretty much the same. And uh, new this year, I asked if people are using any other database than MongoDB. So 12.8% said yes. Uh, so that might we can uh, go back to GraphQL. I think that's uh, definitely there is a overlap with that. And we will see how you know how that goes in the future. Now uh, the never-ending debate about frontends. Uh, React is the clear winner with forty-three point one percent, and Blaze uh, close second with thirty-nine point. 2%, that has not changed over the years. That has always been the case. It kind of came for many people as a surprise at the first survey that Blaze still had such a big share. And we see that Svelte is, uh, and Vue are there as well, increasing their percentage. So as Mike comments, Blaze just won't die. Uh, true, there is also no need for it to die because it's so nicely coupled uh, with Meteor. And recently I've rebuilt or kind of built one app uh, with Blaze, which I'll be showcasing today in the super phase uh, demo. Um, but I'll pretty much what you will only see is kind of the front, front page. So I'm just still working on a lot of the other parts of it. It's just kind of like side project and to kind of get my, again familiar with Blaze. And yeah, coming from React, it's a bit strange, but it still works very nicely. So, uh, Meteor versions. This is chronologically, unless I made some mistakes somewhere, and what people self reported. Um, by the end of the survey. So we see there's still surprisingly quite a few people on the pre 1.0 versions. And that's kind of from some of the comments. I haven't really compared it yet entirely, but uh, from some of the other comments in other parts, I would say it might be legacy internal applications that or just is no will or need to update or kind of going updating from before 1.0 meteor to today uh, is definitely going to be challenged because of, let's say, the major milestone of 1.3 and uh, the later ones that change quite a lot. Uh, for me, probably the best, most surprising one was how uh, 1.8 sticks out. Um, with the number of uh, you know people still using 1.8, uh, the main thing there, the main thing there is that uh, uh, you know in this day and age you should at least be on 1.9 because of node versions. So I think for uh, many people it's an issue with moving up the node versions. And if I remember correct, 1.9 is, uh, let, me, let me double check that before I say it here, uh, which version we have for, so version 
point nine. Okay, so yes, yeah, so this is uh, so version one point eight is still on node eight, while version one point nine starts the uh, node twelve part, um, and then we see people in kind of uh, skewed uh, or kind of growing constantly towards uh, version two point three. And still people have to make the jump to 2.4. And now, uh, or we could probably get the, I'm always at the latest version and 2.4 together. So that's good, it's constantly increasing towards the new version. Uh, there is uh, right now 2.5 version came uh, out yesterday. So you can check that one out as well. But there's kind of big, a uh, lot of people at 2.3, which I would expect there would be a lot more people at 2.2, uh, given that there was accounts 2.0 came at 2.3, which a um, lot, lot of people with legacy packages. So this is uh, definitely interesting. And I think, you know, if you are one of those people who is at version 1.8, could you give us, you know, some details about why that version uh, in particular is your say, favorite. <laughs> and yeah, let's take a look. Uh, so here are some of the comments again. Uh, I reiterated. Uh, kind of what I mentioned, why people are not upgrading, what I kind of noticed, it was a quick uh, run through because the information in there, you know, there's a lot of, lot of input that I need to, had to go through and there just was not uh, enough time because I closed the survey on Wednesday. So yeah, uh, so this is, you could, you know, this is kind of like preliminary results that are can be quickly and easily be quantifiable. And even you know, with this, you know, reasons for not upgrading and stuff like that, um, that's uh, again, up to people's interpretation, how much you know, that should be of a value in evaluating the survey. Um, another thing is that was mentioned was Cordova update, which is bit latest 2.5, there's Cordova 10. So, and given, especially when it comes to, I think, Android, the changes, that's going to be necessary for some projects. And in my opinion, you should always try to be at the latest version possible, but I know that sometimes realities of business are not so nice. So uh, off to a, another section for the community. So uh, most people have heard about major community packages and most people use them, which I think is kind of given uh, that you know, major community packages should encompass the most used packages from the community that are no longer maintained by their original creator or create one scam with the community maintenance to have less of a burden. So that's remains quite high. Also here is a bit of a sampling bias uh, because the survey you know, primarily is advertised to people who are active in community. So in that case, I'm gonna have a bit of a oversampling here of community or active community members. So always a uh, tricky question regarding financing for open source. And uh, we have almost a quarter of who would be, who is, uh, be interested in financing. And then we have 16% for no and 60% for maybe. Uh, given everything and people's behavior, I always group the no and maybe together into the no category or cannot be bothered category. 
Uh, so but still we have at least almost a quarter of people who would be interested and willing to financially support uh, development. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, you know, preferred ways how to do it. Uh, one big kind of growth that we saw was uh, grow of GitHub sponsors compared to previous years because previous year GitHub sponsors just started as we start as I started the survey. So uh, that's that's a new thing. I think it's become a preferred way. Things like Patreon had a significant decrease of shares, and I think right now, as things are, uh, GitHub sponsors is kind of the preferred way. And now, uh, shameless uh, uh, self plug. I also have a. GitHub sponsor account. So if, if you are interested in supporting what I'm doing, uh, then you know, please go ahead and send me some love. And you also get my uh, say personal newsletter, which uh, has also news from the community and everything else that I do. So uh, results of information, I think compared to previous year, this was much more diverse and it has uh, kind of shrink to a couple places. So forums and GitHub remain strong as always. Same with Meteor Docs and Guide. Uh, that have, uh, I think I would say probably has increased compared to previous years. Uh, communities like kind of came onto the map. Dev.2 and written articles uh, kind of meet together. So those are also up there, but we also have new here is the podcast and video tutorials and news, which are starting up. So uh, those are growing compared to previous year while everything else is kind of decreasing. So if you want to advertise somewhere, uh, you know, bidding on the forums, is uh or in writing articles right now for me to come is probably a good good way to do and as a bonus you can do a video tutorial or some new announcements so for community newsletter here is the breakdown for uh of satisfaction i would definitely say that the could be better has increased and more about the future of a newsletter will be in my year interview for Meteor community packages uh, later in the day presentation. So check that one out. It's a major announcement in regards to the community newsletter there. So big new section uh, this year was about Meteor Cloud and what's going on there. So first of all, are people hosting on Galaxy? Uh, so as you can see, 67% do not host on Galaxy. Uh, it's usually quite a mix of reasons why and why not, I'll check that detail. And then we have 21% or 22% hosting on Galaxy and 11% some of them. So that's usually with the more diverse uh, companies where they have multiple uh, applications, some meter ones, some not or they have some specific requirements. Uh, this means uh, in short that there's still quite a market for Meteor software to improve Galaxy, uh, which is always good for everybody, but you know, there's large markets still to attract for people to switch to Galaxy. I ask as my favorite, uh, way is what are the new regions that people would like to see on Galaxy? And can I, can I, can I highlight here Frankfurt and Perry or Paris, uh, which are both EU and you already have an EU region. So, and from what I've gathered from the comments, this is mostly due to uh, privacy restrictions and or privacy laws uh, that kind of dictate that uh, you know, it has to be in the countries, uh, so in France or in Germany. 
and so that's quite a big one. We have quite a big uh, interest in having one in South America, which is a region entire that's still missing from Galaxy. Obviously more for, uh, we have quite a few from Ohio or for US East too. It's kind of surprising because we already have US East uh, data center uh, for Canada. And then, you know, again, US West one, which is where Silicon Valley is. So that's kind of not that much surprising. And from, from the Asia Pacific region, we have Singapore followed by Tokyo. Um, so I think Apple is quite a big technology hub. So that makes sense that uh, there is quite a few, quite a large interest to have server servers there. And for me, my personal favorite Tokyo is uh, not that high. So I guess I have to work more there. So uh, other hostings that kind of people mentioned that or that they were using, uh, largest chunk is that they have their on-premise or hosting or self-hosting or that they are, you know, just uh, you know a hobby project. So that was kind of the biggest one. And obviously uh, AVS for was quite a common, followed by DigitalOcean, and then we had. A lot of uh, a lot of other smaller ones, uh, and I lumped uh, the into the other section regional uh, hosting sites or hosting providers, and that was mostly related to you know if we go back also here to where people want to host regions. So for Germany and France, those a lot of those those provide hosting providers were in that other category. Uh, because people make the host there because of the law. So uh, half an hour in, and it's kind of time for reviewing what all of this uh, means. I've kind of covered it uh, a lot. Uh, one thing is, I would say that the technology stack, if we go uh, back to it is not uh, is not really changing that much when it comes to GraphQL, to Uplog. Uh, uh, newly now we know that there's also quite, uh, or at least part of the community uh, that uh, uses other databases than MongoDB. So that's something probably to also continue to explore and play with in the future. And front end frameworks kind of remain the same, but I think there is a potential that next year we'll see the increase of view given the official, uh, say, connection that we have to view, and that's kind of being worked on. And hopefully, we'll, what I hope to see in the future is to see that we have more uh, people moving towards you know more up-to-date versions of Meteor. Uh, it's primarily also because uh, everything below version 1.11 uh, it will not receive uh, you know any security updates or anything uh, related to that. Uh, and also you people will miss on some of the new capabilities that are being shipped, but I would steal uh, you know from Felipe if I started announcing here what's coming. So uh, that's uh, that's I think something to kind of watch for and especially then also uh, I hope that uh, your software is going to, Release really some statistics of their own that will show us, you know, the actual usage of the different versions to see. It will be super interesting, you know, at least out, just out of the curiosity standpoint on that. And 
it will be also important to kind of figure out uh, in regards to why people are not upgrading, you know, except you know, people being lazy or not, you know, wanting to mess with already working projects. Things like, you know, blockers that we could remove in the community or Microsoft software could remove would be great to know about. And we have at least some insight uh, to this from the survey. So we'll see, hopefully, uh, I hope we can maybe take, take something from that. I think from kind of my personal feeling, the community is uh, kind of still the same as it used to be, but probably a bit less active. I kind of get the feeling from all developers that the lockdowns and everything, uh, especially in the beginning, how there was a high demand on, you know, increased productivity for our our part because now everybody is also even more dependent on technology. That a lot of people are quite a burnout, and or they and that kind of that they don't have time or energy to spend on, you know, contributing or be part of the community. And as 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 uh, as go the financial, um, that is an ongoing problem, not just in Meteor community, but everywhere in open source. It's a kind of ongoing battle. Uh, I think GitHub sponsors has quite a nice potential to change that situation, and it has changed from for many developers or or not not necessarily many, but few at least that they can now focus more on open source. It will definitely benefit popular project maintainers. But, uh, you know, a lot of the time, it's usually some of these smaller projects and smaller maintainers that kind of maintain the, you know, kind of hold up the entire ecosystem. It's That's the far famous uh, XFCG comics where you have this crazy, you know, pyramid uh, about you know all the you know programs and everything that's you know, holding up the corporate structure and then you have like one tiny piece if you take out everything is going to crumble and in there is so there's like a note to it you know a library that uh, somebody has been maintaining thanklessly for the last 10 years And as we've seen with, you know, Aruna's departure and uh, now with, with user accounts packages, uh, uh, you know, if the maintenance are gone, and especially if it was like a popular package, as it's heyday, and suddenly there's nobody to fix it, then suddenly people realize, oh, you know, where are the developers? I have been using this and now it's blocking me from upgrading. And I think we'll have, uh, you know, if, if this is to change, then that's going to require some, you know, pretty big earthquake moment uh, for this to really change people's thinking. And yeah, as, as for cloud, uh, I see only great opportunities uh, for Galaxy. And this also shows that you don't have to be dependent on Galaxy, that there are other options, but at least from my personal experiences, uh, you know, sometimes people complain that Galaxy is too expensive, which you know, if you're running small projects is not true, but if you are running larger projects, the extra cost is, you know, you would have to spend that uh, in time and probably also in money elsewhere, especially if you start, you know, growing. So uh, that's, you know, that's from my experience, what I've seen with you know, companies and what, what people are doing. So unless you are kind of into DevOps and which kind of has been the kind of the big trend lately that everybody is, every big company you know, wants to have their own DevOps team and show nice pretty graphs and other things. And so that's kind of what uh, Galaxy is antithetical to kind of try to remove the need for DevOps for you to worry about. Okay. 
So that's been a review for me. You know, if you want to also kind of share your thoughts on, uh, you know, preview of these uh, results, feel free to raise hand in Zoom. I'll be more than happy to uh, give you a speaking space or type, you know, your comments. And in a moment, we'll kind of look into what are the next steps. No one, Mike King, Jan Kuster, no comments on this so far. <laughs> or anybody from Vasco wants to chime in with their experiences. <laughs> All right. So I'll give you more time. In the meantime, uh, what will be the next steps? Uh, once I recover from meteor impact, I will start anonymizing the data, which uh, will be quite difficult this year because uh, some people took it that they wrote like, hi, I am this guy from this company uh, in you know, multiple places or you know, here at you know, in the name of the company, uh, we have, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, and there are also some comments. There's one commenter in, in particular that, uh, let's just say, is data point, you know, it's kind of useless data point because he's kind of spewing there. It's kind of like that one of the haters and he's spewing nonsense that hasn't been true for over a year. And, Another problem with that is, you know, that when I kind of mentioned this to a couple of people, everybody's like, oh, it's this guy, you know, it's just the annoying guy on the forums and stuff like that. So uh, I might need to remove uh, those comments because of just how his expression in particular is. Uh, it's kind of recognizable, but at the same time, I don't want to because it's, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, part of, being there uh, and some of his comments are like you know really nice for reflection even though the, the wipe that you get from it is not good so that's that's i would say a new challenge uh this year how to you know anonymize the data while also making sure that no data points are lost or that you know people won't go ballistic that i'm all censoring somebody and whatnot so that that is definitely that something that uh, will most likely delay the publication of all these data. Uh, obviously, there I'm going to write an article with further analysis. Everything I told you here, uh, but probably more thought out uh, with more data points, and also I will publish an article with interactive chart. And the final step is going to be publication of all these data. Uh, or cleaned up data for everybody else to take a look through and analyze, uh, so that you can, you know, if you are inter if you are like interested in in that, you know, you can take a look and draw your own conclusions as well. Uh, there is also one one more challenge is that uh, the and that this goes back to a funny thing as well. If we go back to Meteor versions. Um, let's see which one. Yes, version 1.1 and 1.10 are in the spreadsheet merged together because it's a spreadsheet and uh, it thought it was numbers, uh, actual numbers. So it merged them together, but thankfully on the form, there is, a, there is a pie chart with all the, with all the results where 1. version 1.1 and 1.10 are separate. So in the spreadsheet, uh, that data point is, going, is sadly corrupted and probably lost forever, but uh, you know, I, I'm not really sure how much I'm going to handle it if I'm just going to, rewrite it so that the numbers match randomly or uh, I'll try to kind of guess based on the additional comments that people gave. 
So it's going to be this year a much more challenging process, which uh, also means that uh, for next year, this needs to kind of be fixed and improve. And I have a couple ideas what to do, but uh, that's something that I will probably start really thinking of uh, after the new year. And next year, again, the timing will probably be similar. So the survey is going to start sometimes in September, maybe earlier, depending on how fast I can prepare it and will end just before uh, just before meteor impact. So, and that leads us to the final question and answers. So if you have any questions, comments, now is the time for you to uh, uh, you know, if you have anything that you want to add to this, you know, either type or raise your hands in the Zoom controls, and I would be happy to give you space to speak. I'll, I'll answer here. All right, so I think for okay. From Hugo, any idea when U3 support will be ready? Uh, I'm afraid not. Uh, view is a bit out of my scope right now. Um, but the best thing you can do is uh, go to the repository where it's being developed, help test it. I think that's uh, I think it's ready for testing as. As of now, so you know, go in, test the new version, you know, give them feedback. You know, one big thing is you know, you have to kind of also help sometimes help things along. Okay, so uh, last thoughts, last options, going once, nothing, 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 twice. And going thrice, so with, without any further ado, Thank you uh, very much uh, for attention. Thanks sponsors for sponsoring Meteor Impact and all your insight and help. And I will see you at the uh, next session. Stay tuned. There are going to be some changes in the programming because of uh, just say some natural disasters that happened to some of the speakers. So see you around.